All right, well, hello AP Physics students, and welcome to this video lecture, um, which is going to formally introduce us to the calculus portion of this unit on 1D kinematics. So, for those of you that um, for those of you that haven't taken calculus before, calculus is basically the mathematics of change, where we're trying to see um, changes in relationship, we're trying to find rates based on variables that we have, based on functions that we have. Um, it was created by Isaac Newton, so we could explain physics, um, but before we get to that, what you can see here on this slide is I have two position versus time graphs, and this is why I spent such an emphasis uh, and, and spent so much time early on in this unit on motion graphs um, because they can really add a lot of context for us as it relates to the calculus that we need to know for this unit. So looking at our first position versus time graph here, if I were to ask you to find the rate of change of this object's position as it relates to time, what would you do? Well, hopefully you would say, okay, Mr. Welch, I can take two points along this line that I have here, and I can find the slope. And we know then that the slope is going to equal our velocity, and that's going to be our change in position over our change in time. And we know with a linear relationship that we see in this graph that that rate of change, that rate of change for position over time is, is not changing. It's a constant value. So that makes our life really simple. But we've already seen situations where we do not have that linear relationship. Okay, we don't have a constant velocity. We don't have a constant acceleration, right? We've seen scenarios like that. So we could, if we wanted to, I could ask you on this graph, I could say, hey, let's find, let's find the average velocity of, let's find the average velocity of this object's motion. So what you could do is you could say, okay, if I want to know the average velocity, I need two points and I could find the slope of that line. And what that line is called is it's called a secant line. Okay, relate back to some, some math that you might have learned 8 million years ago. Right? But a secant line is just a straight line that's joining two points on a given function. Okay, so we can very easily find that slope. It's the same thing that we did over here, right? But now what if I asked you, I want to know the instantaneous velocity at this point right here. Well, that, that becomes a lot more difficult, right? Because I'm talking about a specific point. If we went over to this graph here and I asked you to find the instantaneous velocity, you could pick any point along here because you know that that velocity is constant because we see a linear relationship. So this is where the calculus comes in. And, and really what a derivative is, what a derivative is, is we're basically moving these two points right here closer and closer and closer until they barely touch at that point. And what happens is we create what is called a tangent line. Okay, this is called a tangent line. A tangent line is a line that touches that function at one point. So what I could do is I could ask you to find a whole bunch of different instantaneous velocities. And what you would then look at is you would look at tangent lines all the way along this graph shape. Or along this graph function, I guess is probably the better way to put it. But what does that actually look like? And, and how can we make that useful? Well, what we can say is we still want to find what velocity is. So we're still finding, oops, we're still finding velocity. And we're still thinking about velocity as a rate of change of position 
as it relates to time. However, again, because we're moving these points closer and closer together until they're just barely touching, our x values are getting super, our change in x value is getting super small, but our change in time value is also getting super small. So what we then say is that velocity is equal to a very, very small change in x divided by a very, very small change in time. So understand that we are still looking at a rate of change as it relates to position and time, but we're just looking at much, much smaller changes in those variables as opposed to this graph over here where we were looking at much larger changes in the variables that we were, that we were given. Now, the same thing holds true with A velocity versus time graph okay so let's say that I have a velocity versus time graph that's all funky looking like this right and I want to know the instantaneous acceleration well all we're finding then is we need to find what the slope of that tangent line is at some point in time I suppose I should label my axes so you actually know what's going on here right so what that's going to look like then is that if we're given a velocity function, we need to then say that acceleration is equal to a really, really small change in velocity over a really, really small change in time. Okay, all this is telling us is that velocity is the derivative of position as it relates to time, and acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time, okay? So we're going to see an example of this and what this actually looks like for us on the next slide. All right, so to add a little context to the discussion we just had on the previous slide and just to help you understand what we can do with this idea of derivatives as it relates to 1D kinematics. Um, I have a super generic problem here. This would be like one of the first few problems you would see um, in a college physics textbook. So a particle's motion is modeled by the equation um, x of t is equal to 3t squared minus 4t. What is the particle's velocity at t is equal to 3 seconds or time is equal to 3 seconds. So to differentiate and to take a derivative in this class, we are going to use a pretty simple process that is called the power rule. So what the power rule is looking like here, um, let's say that I'm given a function f of x is equal to x raised to the nth power, okay? And I'm trying to take the derivative of that. Well, what the power rule is going to tell us is that the derivative of that function with respect to x is going to equal, first step, we take a look at this exponent here, and we multiply it by the coefficient that is attached to our variable. So to be really explicit here, the coefficient that we have here is 1, right? So we're going to take our coefficient, sorry, our exponent times our coefficient. So we are going to get n. We keep our variable. And then the last step is we take our original exponent minus 1. Okay, so once again, first step, we take our exponent, multiply it by our coefficient. We leave our variable, and then we subtract 1 from our original exponent. Okay, so that is the power rule. Okay, so that is uh, kind of the basic form that we're going to, our basic process that we're going to use in terms of differentiation in this course. So what does that look like in this problem? Well, um, again, the equation that is defining 
the motion of this object is 3t squared minus 4. That is our position function. And we're trying to find an instantaneous velocity. So that needs to tip us off that we need to take a derivative. Okay, we need to find that really, really small change in position as it relates to time. So we know that velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So applying the power rule to this function, I am going to get 6t minus 4. Okay, let's go through that. So I take this exponent, 2, I multiply it by my coefficient, I get 6. Okay, I subtract 1 from my original exponent, so I get 1. Okay, so t raised to the 1, we just leave it as t, right? Now this part is a little bit tricky, so I have 4t. Do the power rule on this as well. Okay, so again, to be very explicit here, this is t raised to the first power. So I multiply 1 times 4, I get 4. Now I subtract 1 from my original cof or from my original exponent. I don't know why I keep mixing those up. I subtract 1 from my original exponent, I get t raised to the 0, which is just 1. So all I end up with here for this second term is just 4. So this is our velocity function with respect to time. So I really, I could give you any, any time value and you could find the instantaneous velocity from here, but we were given a specific time. So we're trying to find that instantaneous velocity at three seconds. So what we have to do is plug in three for our time. Therefore, we end up with our instantaneous velocity at 3 seconds equal to 14. Now, I'm not going to attach any units to that because our units were not defined in this problem. So we don't really need to um, add on units there. So um, this is just a brief uh, introduction to calculus as it, re as it relates to 1D kinematics, specifically derivatives and, uh, and what derivatives actually mean. Now, uh, the connection here is um, when we were looking at position versus time graphs with accelerated motion, right? We had graphs that look like this. And what I did, Davin, you'll like this. I drew my dashes. Well, those dashes were simply tangent lines, okay, just small tangent lines that were showing us how the um, instantaneous velocity was changing at various points, okay, and that was able to tell us what the motion of that object was like. Was it speeding up? Was it slowing down? You know, what, what did those slopes of the tangent line look like? Um, so there's your connection there. So um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, for those of you that haven't taken calculus, I would encourage you to find uh, a buddy in the room. I know there's quite a few of us that have taken calculus before. They know the basic processes. Um, but our main goal is, is to make calculus meaningful and, and to make it useful for us in the context of physics. So um, if you do have any questions, we're going to keep applying this in the coming days, and we're going to look at integration and what that can tell us as it relates to kinematics. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, take care of your physics students.